Call of Duty, folks. It is Diecast Buffet here again. Welcome back to, well, yes, NASCAR Thunder 2003. It's time for the Donington Spring Race, which is the 400-mile uh, night event, race 10 of the season. Last race, well, was at Richmond, and sure enough, Tony Stewart picked up a huge win. Uh, actually, no, it wasn't Richmond. I, what am I thinking? Oh, yeah, the re week before then was Richmond. Kansas was the last race. That was Tony Stewart getting that done. Here's a quick look at the uh, the point standings. It's been a while since we've played this game, so kind of have to refresh everything. Your points leader, of course, is Tony Stewart. So picking our paint scheme here, guys. We're going to run the primary because why not? And uh, we're going to Darlington. Alrighty, folks. So, yeah, um, a little bit rusty there. 35th is the qualifying effort. So uh, let's go trackside. We're in Darlington to bring you another NASCAR Winston Cup Series event. The fans are ready, and so are we. Barney, drivers love coming to Darlington because of its history, but they often leave wishing they hadn't shown up. Why is that? Well, we'll see a lot of drivers run right up against the wall here all race long. That makes you fast, but it can also be very costly when you make even the slightest mistake. Johnny Benson won the Bush Series championship in 1995. That championship was sandwiched between two Rookie of the Year awards. He won the Bush Series award in 1994, followed up his championship with Winston Cup Rookie honors in 96. Mark Martin had an amazing streak of 12 consecutive years in the top 10 in points, snapped in 2001. Mark Martin has been a model of consistency since he hooked up with Roush Racing. He qualifies well, he finishes well, and everyone out there on the racetrack respects his skill behind the wheel. Jeff Burton will try to use this race to close in on the points lead. Gaining on the leader is tough when you are in the top five in points. It takes you having a good race and the leader having a bad one in order to gain anything substantial. Alrighty, folks, here we go. Rocket Man Ryan Newman on the pole. Pretty cool uh, Craftsman car on the outside. But, yep, it is time for the Darlington 400. Now, I'm a little bit rusty right now. <laughs> we made a lot of changes to the car uh, post-qualifying. and I mean, not even close to how the car was in Q-Trip. So, we're going to be full aggression here trying to get through the field as fast as we possibly can 29 circuits not an easy task and right off the rip great start to the event um it's gonna be fun here guys so if you're just tuning in for the first time uh this playthrough is just a normal season playthrough with a slightly custom schedule um in terms of difficulty we're racing on legend uh legendary or the, the hardest difficulty However, I do have um, assists on because I am not that good enough of driving on this game to do so. Uh, we already got some damage. Let's check the nose. That uh, doesn't look too bad. Um, aerodynamics will be affected heavily based on uh, the damage you have on your car. But the good thing about um, this game, and it was the only game until I think Heat 4 or Heat 5, you can actually adjust how the AI races you. Um, I have the AI pretty much maxed out in terms of how many mistakes they'll make. Uh, pit strategy. Whoa! Sorry, Terry Labonte. Uh, so we can see some cautions. Uh, organic cautions as we just hit the five car again. I am so sorry, bud. Come on, car. Just, we just don't have that speed right now. 35th. It's just incredible. Starting in 35th and... <laughs> <laughs> it's just, the car feels so bad. When two races ago, we were in victory lane at Richmond. But yeah, we're, we're going to be taking every gamble, every opportunity we possibly can to get as much track position back because it's going to be a long Darlington race. 29 circuits is a long way. you got to survive in advance. We'll get a top five update, and we'll see who is out front. Currently, it's still Rocket Man. He's out front with the Labonte mired back in second. I mean, I'm pushing the car. The only thing I'm hoping uh, that kind of goes our way is the tire wear. Perhaps 
we'll, we'll get better tire mileage uh, than the AI. And, you know, the closing laps of this first run perhaps will be a little bit faster and we can start making some way. Because if not, it's going to be a long race, fellas. Oh, my goodness. And I'm, I'm pushing the car. I'm pushing it, and it's just... I mean, you can just see how deep we're diving into three. And we get a little bit here, but coming off turn four, we give it up. We just don't have that straight line speed that we need. I would say entering turn three is our strong suit right now. We've got to get better off four. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I just It just bogs down on corner exit just a little bit. And that's all it takes. You know, a fraction of a second can completely destroy your momentum. Whoa! Everyone kind of backed up there. A little bit of uh, cosmetic detailing to the 28 car. Uh, lap 7 out of 29 here. I mean, we are racing like we're going for the win against Kyle Petty. That's how tough <laughs> Darlington is. I mean, it is not a cakewalk. And that's why I love this game so much. Is It, it produces such an organic challenge. You know, you look at so many of these NASCAR games nowadays, it's like you go to one track, you you win it by four laps, and then you go to another track, and you can't even get a top 30. In this game, it just it feels so well balanced. And you wonder why 20 years later, people still play this game. You look at Thunder 2004, 19 years later, and it's still regarded as the greatest NASCAR game ever. It's because they knew what they were doing, guys. We got a little bit of a run on the 45 car here. 28's going to throw a block, entering three. Come on, come on, come on. There we go, there we go, there we go. Momentum. Oh, boy. Car gets tied off four, but we completed the pass. And oh, by the way, there's still 20 laps to go. <laughs> come on, come on. Just, we just don't have the speed. We're going to need a, a timely caution... Uh, the opportunity to get off sequence with the leaders. We need something. Uh, just get a, a large amount of the track position back. And You know, if we were racing in the top five, we probably would have a decent chance. I had to get off his back bumper there. We're going to lose some time. If I would have stayed on his bumper, he would have kept slowing down. It's just the way the AIs are programmed. If you run into them and you maintain contact, they just keep slowing down and slowing down. And eventually, you'll get ran over from behind. And <laughs> that's how you have a DNF. 33rd position, guys. I mean, I'm mashing <laughs> the buttons on the controller, trying to get as much, um, you know, just forward bite. Trying to get off the corners, trying to get into the corners as deep as possible. Come on, come on, come on. Keep that momentum. I feel like the AI is getting a little slower now. I feel like their tires are starting to add up. So this might be the, the only opportunity we get to make a substantial gain. Come on, come on. There we go, there we go. Got to get a round wall trip. Car bottomed out, or not bottomed out, but got really loose again two times in a row. We should have had that pass there. I noticed entering turn one here, guys. The car gets a little bit tight, and we're not able to just kind of flat foot to the apex in turn one. We're having to lift early, and that's just killing the whole back straightaway. And the bad thing is we have, like, the wedge and the sway bar. Oh, sorry, Waltrip. Nearly maxed out. Uh, cars coming down pit road here. Looks like Kenseth should be leading them off. Lap 13 here. Now, where do we fall into the strategy for the pit uh, cycle? I'm going to do whatever the leaders don't do. If they pit early, we got to stay out, right? That's what we gotta do. We gotta stay out as long as we can. Try to catch that caution as Waltrip uh, pays us back a little bit there. I believe the 12 car still out front. Uh, here comes the 43 and company. Let's get a leader update. And it is, yeah, Ryan Newman, Rocket Man. Uh, hard charging here at Donington. Come on, come on, come on. I mean, we're getting outran by fantasy cars, guys. Let's see. Okay, Newman's coming in here. I'm going to stay out a couple laps here, guys. I'm going to stay out. We have nothing else to lose at this point. 
I know the tires are worn, but at this, we, we, we're just hoping for a caution, guys. We, we are just hoping for a caution because here's what's going to probably happen. If we pit right, or if we would have pitted right then, we cycle through, no yellows, nothing out of the ordinary. We'll probably finish around, <clears throat> around 30th. But if we can catch a caution here, catch maybe a couple cars lap down, we might be able to get a top 15. And that's kind of what I'm thinking here, is running as long as we can, even though it's going to it's gonna give us a bad position if we don't get the caution, there's nothing else we can do. You know, it's... <laughs> it's either we finish 30th doing nothing, or we possibly have a top 15 at least trying something. And I mean, the, the, the tires on this car are completely gone. They might only be yellow on the screen, but believe me, these things... It is... The car is ridiculously tight. Come on, come on. Oh, yep, Gordon with those fresh tires already running is down here. Top seven right now. We just gotta find a caution. Gotta find a caution here. Someone just spit out something. Because <laughs> we need it. Oh, boy. I don't want to hold Kenseth up, man. He could, he could win this race. I'll stay out one more lap. Oh, I don't want to hold Martin up. He's our teammate. No, that was just a bad timing. Go, Martin, go. Go, man, go. Dang it. You know, the one time we really need a caution, we don't get one. And if we didn't try to at least catch a yellow, guys, we were going to finish terrible. I mean, you're running as hard as possible for 33rd. So, my point is, is that... Okay, we're going to pit here. You had to try something. It didn't work out. It happens. So, we're going to do... Oh, I just heard someone skid marking on the track. I'm not sure what happened there, guys. Someone made contact. We're going to lower the PSI. I mean, we're just going to try something. Or we're probably going to lose 10 seconds on the racetrack, at least. Based on the tire wear. Because, I mean, Gordon came off pit road. Roughly, probably a straightaway uh, away from us. Ran us down and passed us with ease. So that just shows you how powerful uh, fresh tires can be at Darlington. How y'all doing out there, fellas? Come on, team. Let's get a great pit stop. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, per perfect pit stop. Thank you, Lord, for that. But it's going to give us a dead last. But again, truth be told, we were going to finish 35th if we didn't try something. So... Unfortunately, it is what it is. However, if we do catch a quick caution, we might be able to, you know, restart and, you know, maybe be able to pick off some cars. But right now, that was the only only way we could um, have a good, a decent, uh, right, decent, but a, a somewhat of a good finish, right? Uh, we said that earlier in the race that we were going to take every gamble we could. That was the only gamble we could, we could take, so we had to take it. We did make an air pressure adjustment. Um, perhaps that's going to help give the car a little bit more of a of, of, of some mechanical grip. And I'm going to push the car. I'm going to push it. we got nothing to lose, so... We might hit the wall a couple times. <laughs> well, maybe we could Ross Chastain it. <laughs> Ain't that... I still can't believe that dude did that at Martinsville, man. Freaking full song wall road. You know darn well someone's going to try that again if they don't outlaw it in NASCAR. I'm, I'm just saying, you don't think if someone's running second at Darlington and knowing how slow you get to go through three and four, you're not going to flat foot it? Yes, Larson tried it, but that was with a Gen 6 car, guys, with uh, metal, uh, sheet metal fenders. If you have a composite body stock car and you have the ability to have a fifth gear, I'm just saying, guys, don't think there's drivers in the off season if they don't outlaw it, right? There's drivers in the off-season that are going to go and actually practice that with their crew chief and their engineer of where they need to hit the revs, how much RPMs they need. I mean, they're, they're going to try that if they don't outlaw it at some of these tracks. I mean, could you do it at New Hampshire? Maybe, maybe not. I have no idea. <laughs> I think that would be extremely dangerous. Uh, Phoenix could probably be done. I think Darlington could be done. Uh, we see Larson tried that, but it didn't work. 
I mean, there, there's there got to be some tracks on the circuit you could probably make it work. Maybe a Richmond, I doubt it. Bristol could work. I, I, I don't know. Because, I mean, you have to have a certain RPMs, right? You have to have a certain gear ratio. You have to have an engine that can, you know... If, if it's not programmed and built to maintain speed at that portion of that gear and all kinds of crazy uh, situations, it might be slow enough to not gain any positions, but it could be good enough to gain so. I don't know. You, you, believe me, there's going to be some engineers going to be looking into it. Like, where do they need to be in the engineering aspect to make it happen? Zeri 25 car. You know, honestly, we might be able to actually get back to the top 35 if we could just keep this momentum going. we got a Stanley Steamer. That's going to be... Oh, Jeff Gordon Caution is out here at Donington. We might have a green-white checkered opportunity here. Caution is out. Jeff Gordon... Oh, my goodness. Huge wreck with the back straightaway. Whoa! Bobby Hamilton went up and over. Tony Stewart, another championship contender. He's got some damage. Bobby Hamilton on his lid. And Jeff Gordon has a DNF. Wow! And that's how quickly things could change. And we have fresher tires than everyone, so I'm just going to coast to the line. Wow! Dude, let's get one lap restart. Come on. Are they going to be able to clean up this mess? So the 55 car clearly has damage. He blows a tire or something. Tony Stewart gets the worst end of it. And then, well... <laughs> and then the 55 gets the worst end of it. Then Craven does. It's just... Oh my goodness, Tony Stewart actually did a flip. Um, wow. That was crazy. And yes, we are going to get a, what is that, one lap restart, I think? Yep, here we go. Mad dash for the win. Tony Stewart still on the field pulling a, a what is it, a 97 Earnhardt, flipping and still racing. Oh boy. That was chaotic. And that 55 car... Uh, with the egregious amount of damage, that might have been from the pit stop we had earlier. Because I did hear someone, uh, some cars making, the, you know, the, the crash sound effect. So perhaps he got loose and someone ran over him and that's why he was running poorly. But look at this. We're on the inside underneath Craven. Coming to the stripe. Shades of 2003 a little bit. 22nd place. And we were running dead last at the halfway point. And Bobby Labonte, by nearly two tenths of a second... It's going to steal the Darlington 400 over Newman. What a crazy uh, finish uh, right there, fellas. That was crazy. So, wow. <laughs> Bobby Labonte gets it done when Newman was clearly the dominant car. Uh, that is really interesting, fellas. That is really interesting. So, yeah, Newman gets it done. Bobby Labonte. How about that? Look at that. 29 laps, 23 lead. And Bill Elliott with the, the upset third place. Great run for the, the Everham camp. Jeff Green with a top 10. That caution was crazy. Because if it would have happened one lap later, perhaps Newman could have won this race. But this is going to change the points. Because Tony Stewart's going to be netted a 26th place finish. Not good for his championship hopes. Uh, and you go through the field and it's going to get even worse. The 24 car. Um, who ha had a top 10 run going all night. He was extremely fast. Had a chance to win it. Uh, he's going to be dead last. The bottom of the barrel with the DMF late in the going. So that changes everything. And uh, let's see where Sterling Marlin finished again. He had a great points night. So sixth place, uh, great run for him. So that's all uh, for this episode, guys. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you can, please give it a huge thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I'm not sure where the next episode will be. I'm, gonna tr I'm, I'm trying, guys. I'm trying to get more consistent with these videos. Um, you get busy. Things happen, right? I'm sure a lot of y'all understand. Hopefully, I'll do. But anyways, um, hope to see you in the next episode of NASCAR Thunder 2003. Um, of course, you know, for all your NASCAR diecast shopping needs, hats, t-shirts, you name it. Uh, you can use that promo code down below, guys. You can save on shipping at Circle B Diecast for any orders, $30 or more. Use code Diecast Buffet, guys. That's all for now. Have a great one. Diecast Buffet, signing off.